All right, welcome back to another tutorial video in the Precision Baseball Tutorial Series. In this video, we're going to cover trail runners. So this is something I've wanted to put into a ball game for a very long time, and it finally has worked out really well to go into Precision Baseball. Super excited about it. Um, it's a part of the game that rarely gets covered, um, but it can be a huge part of the game and how some decisions on the field are made by the manager, by you, by the gamer. Um, and some things are automatically done and some things are not. So let's take a look at a scenario and we have uh, Miggy Tejada at the plate against Freddy Garcia. Uh, Tejada hits a single to center field. Randy Wynn is our center fielder. Mark Ellis is at first base. Uh, I'm sorry, Mark Ellis is at second base and Eric Chavez is at first. So uh, we got a, a complicated scenario here. So we have a, a base hit to center field. Randy Wynn is going to pick up the ball. First we have to decide is Mark Ellis going to go home or not. And we've either through a question mark or whatever. So we've looked at our runner advancement on the hits to the outfield. We have a, a hit to center field. It's a question mark. Uh, Oakland is aggressive and we have a question mark. So we're going to go ahead and send Mark Ellis home. We need the run. And Ellis is a plus two running. And Randy Wynn, his range and his arm are going to be a minus one. So we have the advantage uh, for Mark Ellis. Um, and I'll go through an, an option here after I explain to you what happens with the trail runner. So let's just go ahead and say that the throw is going to go through to the plate. There's an option that you can cut the throw off. That's why I'm saying that. So uh, if, if we're going to have the throw go through to the plate, we're going to try to let Randy Wynn throw him out. So Randy Wynn has to use this outfield arm chart. He has a zero for an outfield arm, so he is a 101 to 210. And look at that. So we have a 205. That falls within the range of the green. Green means out. So Randy Wynn, against all probability, has thrown out Mark Ellis at the plate. So he has been eliminated. And now we need to think about our trail runners. And our trail runners are going to be the guy who's on base. He's on first base. And Tejada is the one who hit the ball. So we have two guys to kind of figure out. And what we do for trail runners is you can, I like to print this front and back with the runner advancement. But if you don't want to print front and back, you can just um, print two sheets, whatever you want to do. It's, it's two pages in the file. But you see here that there's a trail runner section. Now the trail runner is also split up into aggressive, normal, and cautious. Uh, you can find those values on the uh, manager tendencies chart. It's to the right with all the base running tendencies. Uh, so for Oakland, they are aggressive uh, with everything. So all, all the base running uh, parts, they are aggressive. So on a, we see here that we have a throw to third base, so we have a throw to home. On our play, we had a throw to the plate. So we're going to look down here at this uh, line here. They're aggressive. Eric Chavez is a one and he is at first base. So uh, he is going to move to second base on the single. And then we want to know, does he move up to third base on the throw? That's what we want to know. So he's a plus one and you can see on a throw to home for an aggressive team, a, plus, a one to five is going to advance to third. So he advances to third on the throw as the throw goes through. Um, same thing for even a cautious team. Uh, you can see that. But for runners who are not quite as fast, uh, they're not going to advance on the plate. So Eric Chavez goes to third. And now that clears up a, a base for Miggy Tejada try, to try to go to second. So when we look at Tejada, he is a plus one and the same thing happens here so he they are both going to take an extra base so both of these guys are going to wind up at second and third because they just keep trucking they just keep going on the throw to home uh, so that's going to be um, a big shot in the arm uh, if you're aggressive and you have fast base runners and they're gonna the trail runners are gonna to take they're gonna go <laughs> right okay so let's say um you have a, a, a two run lead as the eighth inning uh, and you need to, and we get our scenario back. So Tejada hit the ball. Mark Ellis is at second base. 
we have two down in the let's say it's the bottom of the eighth inning and we need to try to preserve this lead so we can let Mark Ellis score and you can just determine in your in yourself in your heart that or you can say it out loud whatever you want to do they're gonna cut off the throw so the throw does not go all the way through to home so then there's no play at the plate so this guy scores automatically because there's the throw is cut off and Eric Chavez moves from first to second on the single and now you have runners at first and second base instead of at second and third base so you can look ahead and you can even see if I let this throw go through you'll be able to see whether those trail runners can advance or not and if they have a question mark maybe you want to let the throw go through if they have an advance maybe you want to cut it off because there's not a very good chance and he did throw them out at the plate and that would be in our scenario uh, with two outs this scenario here he would be out at the plate the inning would be over but if there weren't two outs and you wanted to make sure that you kept uh, these runners in line and or you just look and you say I don't want to take the chance there's a 10 percent chance that you can get thrown out the plate I'm not gonna take that chance we it's more important for us to hold these runners at first and second base than to have them at second and third with two outs and Jermaine Dye coming to the plate so uh, some scenarios and some different things it's not like a cookie cutter the action is the same uh, depending on what you choose but the choice is very different uh, depending on the scenario that you're in so what happens if there is a trail runner with a question mark and so that is going to be a decision uh, if let's say there's a couple of different scenarios right so let's say the um, the base runner the throw goes through to home and you have a uh, you have a minus one base runner who's trying to um, you say I want to I want to have him advance let's say that Xavi was uh, a minus two and I want to try to advance him to third base um, <clears throat> what you would do is the throw comes through to home plate whatever play is made at the plate is made and then you're gonna look at the catcher which I don't have a catcher up but let's see we'll find our catcher our catchers Dan Wilson I think so our catcher is here now the catcher has a fielding rating here it's a minus two uh, you might actually see an error rating here but this is gonna be his, his fielder rating so we look at his fielder rating and we use his fielder rating like you would use uh, his arm. You could also use the throw rating if you wanted to because this is technically like a throwing situation. Uh, so you could use either of these numbers. I would, I would stick to the catcher. Actually, I would stick to the throw rating. Let's go with the throw rating. Uh, so this is a very uncommon situation for the trail runners to be advancing with a question mark and you've run into this. It, you won't catch it very often. So we look at the catcher's throw rating because he's going to catch the ball and throw to a base. And he is a minus one. <clears throat> uh, Eric Chavez, uh, we've determined that he's a minus two. So because Chavez's running rating is less than the catcher's throw rating, we are going to put the onus on the base runner. So then the base runner would have to use the tag up advancement um, extra basis chart here. And if he's a minus two, he's using this. So he has a 211 to 710. So it's about a 50% chance to make it third base. So you would have to determine, is that a chance I'm willing to take? And then you would roll off of this uh, sheet here. So you give it a roll, a 002, and he's going to be dead to rights uh, trying to advance at third base. So that would be a uh, throw from center field to home. The runner is uh, either safe or out, whatever it is. And then the runner tries to advance to third base. The throw goes to third and the runner is out at third base and if that's the third out of the inning that's the third out so um, if not then you would want to figure out does this trail runner here advance as well because now you've got a throw to home and a throw to first base 
if it was Miggy, uh, Miggy Tejada's normal run rating of plus one, uh, then that would be the throw to home he would advance on that anyway. So a little bit more complicated and complex whenever you start doing trail runners and all the base runner advancement, but hopefully this gives you a good feel for what, um, what base running would be like in a real game. Some of the decisions that have to be made on the base paths. And some of those things are, are sort of taken out of your hands. So the scenarios are sometimes set up for you. And then sometimes it's just, uh, within that decisions that you need to make, but sometimes it's just a hold. Sometimes it's an automated advance. Uh, so they would just automatically advance. So uh, it, it only gets tricky if you've got a play at the plate or play at third base, somebody going first to third to third base. And then, you know, you're trying to, you're trying to figure out all these things. So just take it a step at a time, figure out the play at the plate or third base or wherever the throw is going, determine that. And then after that, determine what happens with the trail runners and start with the first one, because if the first trail runner holds, like if Chavez, uh, goes from first to second on a single and he's got a hold off of this chart, there's nothing that Tejada can do, right? You can't overrun somebody. So you, he's just going to stop at first base and you'll have runners at first and second, uh, regardless. And that would be if a slow runner is on base, um, that's typically what's going to happen on a play. He's not going to try to advance on a throw, uh, if he's a very slow runner. So, uh, really interesting, uh, decisions to make and lots of, uh, intricacies in the running game and somewhat in the fielding game as well. And, uh, that covers the trail runners.